All right, hello everybody, welcome to second semester. If you haven't had me, again, I'm Miss Thatcher, so welcome to my videos. Um, today, we have a nice long video that goes through finding integrals for trig functions we don't know yet and inverse trig functions. There's a lot to get through. I'm going to do some proofs, uh, but for the most part, we'll be doing examples so you guys can get a feel for that. Um, so hang in there, um, pause it if you need to, come back to questions or watch them again if you need to. All right, so for the first one, uh, you guys already know how to do the integral for, let's say, sine, cos, sec squared, and cosecant squared, but you don't know these four basic trig functions. So we're going to give you some of those. I'm only going to do one proof today because otherwise this video would be even longer. So let's just do the integral for tan. So instead of tan, I'm actually going to change this into sine u over cos u. And to find the integral of that, I'm actually going to have to use a new another substitution. So I'm going to call this denominator w since I've already used u. I'm going to go ahead and do the integral of, or excuse me, the derivative of both sides. And I'm going to solve for my dw. So I'm going to multiply both sides by the du, and I'm also going to multiply by that negative. So over here in my integral, as you remember from last semester, I'm going to replace my denominator with w, which is what I did. And then I'm going to separate my w stuff with my u stuff. Okay. So we're here. So this is what I was hoping to replace. That can now be a common negative dw. I'll bring the negative out front. And so I have 1 over w dw. You know how to do an integral of 1 over um, a value. That's ln. So negative ln of w plus c. And w, remember, originally was cos u. OK. So over here, as you can see, we just proved that the integral of tangent is negative ln cos u. You can also use positive ln cq. It's just using a different relationship here at the end. Um, so I'm not going to prove that, but you can use either one. So just make sure that you know these cotan becomes ln of sine, secant becomes. This one's a little trickier to prove, but we could if we had time. So these are just things you're going to need to remember. I would make some flashcards. The more you can practice with them, the better you'll get. OK, so let's take a look at an example. In example one, so the first thing I notice here is I've got a function within a function, probably going to use u substitution, and it's of cotangent. So I'm going to need to be mindful of, of that weird integral. So the first thing I'm going to do is use u substitution. OK, and then that would become du equals 2x dx. And then before I decide what to do here, I'm going to go back over and replace my u. Now again, I like to isolate the u stuff with the old x stuff so that I can see what I want to replace, which means I'm going to have to divide both sides by 2 or multiply by 1 half so I can straight plug that in. Um, this becomes then a 1 half, but I like to bring that out front, cotan u du. Now I'm ready to go. Uh, from the previous page, you should remember the integral of cotan is ln of sine of u, of course, plus c, and then last step. Let's just put in that u, which was x squared, plus c. One down. OK, in example two, here we go. We've got a tan function. We've got a function within a function that's pretty much straight up the clue that you're going to be doing the derivative. So my derivative of both sides here gives me 1 half. I'm going to multiply both sides by the dx. And then let's see what we need over here. We've got integral of this. That will become a u dx. So we basically just need to replace our dx. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 to make it a little nicer. So I have 2 tan u du. OK. Then you just have to remember that your integral for tan becomes, remember, a negative ln cos u. And so we end up with negative 2 ln cos of x over 2. Don't forget those absolute values. And of course, plus c. OK, example three. I think you can see where this is going. We've got an e to the 2x on the inside. So that's probably what we're going to let be du. Let's see. Now, when I do the integral of the, this, remember, it's e to the 2x. This is a chain rule, times 2. So I have du equals e to the, well, 2e to the 2x dx. 
let's see what we need. So I'm going to go back over here um, and I'm going to replace with my U's. Now, some people want to put both a U here and a U out front. You're going to see why I don't need to do that in this circumstance. Um, I'm going to, again, separate my U stuff with my E stuff, or excuse me, my X stuff. So this is what I'm hoping to replace, which is good because the derivative produced that. So I don't want to write that as a U here. Those are big ideas, guys, that you need to commit to memory. Okay, so now I'm ready to replace. I'll bring that one half out front. I've got seek U du. I can do that. It is a weird integral, but you can do it. It's one half ln absolute value of secant of u plus tangent of u plus c. And then again, that last step is just to replace your u back in. So e to the 2x plus tan e to the 2x. Absolute value, and then of course, plus c. Okay, an example four. Now this is interesting. So I've got my cosecant inside. I've got something squared. That's that function within a function. Let's just say we decided to let the inside be u, which is probably natural for you. So then I've got the derivative of cosecant. The derivative over here is negative cosecant x cotangent x. So at this point, if we had decided to let that be a du, I hope that you guys see that that's really not going to be helpful because when I replace that, that would just become u squared dx. Notice there's none of all that business. So this was not a good choice, which is going to happen to you. I want you to see those. So the only other option I hope that you see is to actually square this. So cosec x minus 1 times another cosec x minus 1. Take it a step at a time if you need to. I get cosec squared x. My middle term is minus 2 cosec x and then plus 1. So we've got all of this. Now these we can deal with individually. So this first guy, I have the antiderivative of cosecant squared, which hopefully you remember is negative cotans of x. Okay, now the middle one you now know it's going to be negative 2. The integral, this is the new part right here, the integral of cosecant is ln of cosecant of u, which is just an x. So you don't have to use a u substitution minus cotan u. So that's one of those, or cotan x, excuse me. So this is the new part right there. And then 1, the integral of 1, of course, is just x. So that part's easy, plus x, plus c. So long, but actually not hard. The only tricky part should have been the middle, although you did need to memorize that proof. Okay, so for this next part of the video, we're going to talk about finding integrals of values that produce an inverse. So it's not the integral of an inverse, but it produces an inverse out. And the easiest way to show that is actually, I'm going to show you how the derivative of this side produces this, which then should mean that if you do the integral, you go backwards. So, okay. And I'm going to use an x instead of a u for now, just to make it a little bit simpler. Okay. So I'm going to do sine inverse of x over a equals my function. So again, I'm going to show that the derivative of this produces that. And so then, hence, the integral would get you back to that. So, all right, I'm going to start by taking the sine of both sides. It's a little easier to work for the integration. Now I'm going to take the derivative of both sides. So the derivative of this side would just be 1 over a. And the derivative of this side would be cos of y. But because I'm doing it with x, I would have to attach a dy dx. But that's okay because this is technically what I'm looking for. I'm trying to prove what the derivative is. So, okay, so this would be 1 over a divided by cosine y. So I'm going to go ahead and put that cosine y in the bottom. So this is showing me what the derivative of this function is. Remember, this dy dx is the derivative. So what is the derivative again? Well, let's rewrite this as 1 over a times 1 over cos. And then this is where drawing a triangle is actually helpful because if this is a relationship that you know, and it's the sine relationship, remember, this is just telling you the sine relationship. So it's saying, okay, this is an angle where the sine, which is the opposite, is x. The hypotenuse would be then a, and this missing side would be 
the hypotenuse squared minus x squared. How did I get that? I just did trig, guys. Like this little side right here was the missing side squared plus x squared equals a squared. I moved this over. I square rooted. Like that's how I got this side. Okay, anyhow, back to the problem. So if I wanted to finish solving this, I need to plug in the cosine relationship on the bottom. Or some of you might remember that cosine on the bottom is same as secant on top. So I can think of it like this. So then the secant of this same relationship here, because remember that's technically what you're doing, the secant of this same relationship would be hypotenuse, which is A over adjacent. And then the A's would cancel, and so you get 1 over square root of your constant squared minus your function squared is your derivative. So again, it's kind of a long version to show you that this does in fact produce the sine inverse when you do the antiderivative. And I could do the same thing for the tan inverse. There is one that produces the cos inverse, it just has a negative on top, but because we could technically always bring that negative out, we just use sine inverse instead of cos, but you could. So these are the two big ideas and main ideas you need to know. Do you have to prove them every time? Of course not, but I like you to see where it comes from. Okay. So in our first one, um, we notice that we have a value over something plus something squared. That's the tip-off that we might be using sine, or excuse me, one of our inverse trig functions here. So, okay, first of all, let's just say that you thought you could use u substitution. I hope you see quickly that you can't. You're going to have something that produces an x where there is no x on top to try to get rid of, so that's not the smart choice. So later when we start mixing and matching these, that's how you can tell the difference. Okay, so of the two, what does it look like? Well, let me bring those examples back. Of the two, notice there's no square root on the bottom. If I can rewrite the bottom as a relationship like this, which I can, 1 squared plus x squared, I can use this tan inverse. Now, I would bring that 4 out front to actually create a 1 on top, but that's your choice. Okay. So again, this is just an x for me, so that's fine. So this becomes 4 times 1 over a. Now a is really the square root of this constant, which is just a 1. And then tan inverse of u, which is your function. So just remember, this is squared, so my actual u is really just an x over 1. So all of that work to show that I end up with 4 tan inverse of x. Technically, don't forget, plus c. All right. Let's move on, try some more. Okay, in this guy, again, I see a square root on the bottom. I see that I could split it up into 1 squared minus, now this one's a little trickier, it is e to the 2x squared, because remember, squaring a power would be multiplication. So I do have this scenario. And again, I'll bring back those relationships since we're still learning and it looks to match my sine inverse. So if I want to use this though, I do need to use u substitution because this isn't just an x. So I would let this be the u. Again, I'm not going to replace it here. Um, my derivative of both sides would produce a 2e to the 2x. I would go ahead and move that dx over, and I'm going to go ahead and divide by 2 because I know I need it. I'll show you over here why. I'm going to keep this in e to the 2x. I'll let the bottom be 1 squared minus u squared. If I separate my u stuff with my non-u stuff, I get this. And so this is, I could see this coming. So that's why I moved the 1 half over. So this becomes 1 half du. Now this is a perfect match for sine inverse. So I have 1 half sine inverse of u. Now remember, u is e to the 2x, and then over a, which is technically a 1, so I don't need to put it, plus c. Okay. Moving on, our next example. So again, um, we can try, again, if I tried u substitution, that's not going to work because this part, when I do the derivative, is going to produce a 6x to the 5th, which makes no sense with what I have. So that's not the right choice. But I do notice that I can make my denominator into something squared plus something squared. And that's probably helpful for creating a tan inverse. So let's see if we can. If we did that, I have u equals x cubed. My derivative of that is going to be 3x squared dx. And I'll make that 1 third. 
Over here, that produces 1 over 2 squared plus u squared, x squared, dx, and it looks like I'm going to run out of time in this video, so I'll see you in the next video for the answer.